Hey, this is G with All Astrology, and this is free reading time. If you are new to this channel, I want to let you know we do free readings. You go down below, comment your birth info, and we will hook you up. No joke. And the shit is legit. All right. So we are burning the sacred sage and we are guided by our divine feminine. And we have a birth time of 9.51 a.m. And a birth date of February 14th, 1975. You know who you are. You submitted your information to us. And yes, you were not born in the United States for reasons of confidentiality. Pretty sure that's all I need to know. If you hit the subscriber bell, or the bell after you've subscribed, you are notified when your video is uploaded. Oh, excuse all the sage. So let's get right down to the meat and potatoes of this reading. This is a free reading. And so what I'm doing now is discussing some of the most prominent, important things that you're gonna need to know about in your future, okay? And so far, the things that I've looked at, you're gonna wanna know about because you have a hell of a drive, a spiritual drive. It's phenomenal, actually. I'm quite impressed with it. And I'm like, damn, I would love to meet this person. Like, for real, not just, oh, hold on, I'm getting carried away. Not just talk, but actually meet. Because I think that, you know, you've, you've got a lot to offer folks. You've got a lot to offer folks. And I, I'm, I'm really excited to do this reading. Um, First thing, okay, I got to back up a little bit. I pulled the chart ahead to the time that I realized January, we're going to talk about January 2020 for you. It's actually a phenomenal, huge time for you in a very good way. But there are some things you're going to need to know about because you're dealing with multiple energies, multiple powerful energies, not just run-of-the-mill stuff, but multiple powerful energies and power. Pluto is a player involved because of where it's located in your chart. At that time in the video, I'm actually going to flip this around because I want you to see what I'm talking about just by your chart. I know you'll understand what I'm talking about and you'll appreciate me showing you these things. But just real quick, I want to go to the present day for you because this is also equally revealing, equally fascinating. Where is my freaking... I need the light. Thank you. Electronics seem to be doing their own thing. Okay. So let's get down to the meat and potatoes. So today is October 28th, 2019. And I need your transits. Okay. October 28th, 2019. So there is this massive highlight for you right now with this new moon. The new moon was basically in the middle of the night actually on the 28th, but early, early, early morning hours of the 28th. The natal sun in the last two days drove right over and touched your natal Uranus. You're, you have a Uranus in Scorpio in your chart. I actually have a paper chart I can show you really quick because I need to read the one on the screen. See that? You have Uranus right there in, in Scorpio. And the natal, the transiting current sun, had just touched it. Uranus means, I need freedom. <laughs> That's what Uranus means. I need freedom. My individual self has to shine. It cannot be held down. It cannot be held back. And I need to break out. You know, I've just done a video, and I'll, I'll include the link down below for you, because it would be good to watch if you haven't watched it. Well, actually, I haven't even released it yet, but I'll include it because it explains this breakout time, which really is a rise, Phoenix rise time. Truly, it is. It is a time when we are building from our ashes. And I think this is extremely relevant for you. And you're totally going to be like, yes, this is me. Because what are ashes? They're remnants of what's left over after the burn, after the fire by friction. After the, I can't take this shit any longer, something has to end. And from that ending, from that choice, something new begins. You rise up. There is growth, right? 
And that's, you know, just like in the woods where I used to be able to walk. They would do scheduled burns. And these scheduled burns were done for multiple reasons. But one of the beautiful things you see after that is you literally see life. You see green growing up out of these ashes. And you're like, what? Like it's this, how is this possible thing? But it's a reality. It is a tangible reality. So at this time, especially for you, because of the fact that you're literally experiencing Uranus down here and Uranus down here in your chart. Um, Uranus at this moon, at this new moon, I almost said full moon because it feels like a full moon. A full moon is when we are, when we have these revelations of like, just revelations. The light of the sun is hitting and is being, the moon is reflecting it and it's, it's just lit. So it's something that, that is the past because that's the moon deep emotional things because it's in Scorpio and it's Uranus there. So there might be some shocking surprises. And maybe for someone who's been around the block more than a few times, there's not much that surprises you at this point any longer. I could completely and totally understand that. But it might, I think I've, I mentioned this earlier, it's, there's a lot of self-revelations going on in our value in relationships with other people, where we stand you know, what we brought to the table, what we put up on that table, and how it's valued by others. And us maybe not seeing how much we were actually of value. I'm sorry, I keep shaking. I usually blame the cats, but it's me this time. The cats, I just took care of them, and they're all snugged in their beds. Um, so for you, there's, uh, well, in all of us, it's this revelation of our values and how we are now, how we can see how we're being valued in in relationships that we share deeply with. So yes, it's significant relationships. It's relationships where we have merged, whether we've merged our resources and we're considered a partnership or we've emerged our emotional worlds in some way or another. We've, there's bonding. It's, it's the, Scorpio is, is bonded relationships. So however you bonded with somebody. Now, this is a good thing. Okay, this is a really good thing. You're going to move forward and you're going to build on this. Okay, so this is this new moon. Now, this is important that you understand this in your chart. This is in your house of relationships, significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. It's in the house. I showed you already. It's in the house. It's in the seventh house. See that? You have Scorpio there and your Uranus is in Scorpio. So it's my, my significant one-on-one -on -one relationships and your ability to deeply bond with people to very intimately, deeply bond with people. And understanding there's a value in that. There's a big value in that. You also have Pluto. That's what I was talking about earlier that I'm going to talk at the end of this video. You have Pluto in Libra. Well, what is Libra? Libra is this house here, okay? So you, you have a double whammy capacity, I'm putting it. This is one of your superpowers, whether you realize it or not. You have Pluto, right? Remember, Pluto is power in the seventh house, and you have it reiterated again here, but in a different way. It is now in the sixth house. What is the sixth house? Our job, what we do for a living. So I'm pointing this out, and I'm not going into to super detail on that, only because of the fact that this is a reading. It's not an astrology educational video. But there's a later part in the video where I'm going to do that because I know you'll appreciate it. Um, but I'm reiterating and I'm going over this power that you have, this ability to bond deeply. Any significant relationships you have, you have the power to go in and to utilize things of those relationships. They're going to be deeply transformational relationships. Now, does that mean that these have to be the kinds of relationships that are you know, this whole fairy tale Hollywood type thing where we have this deep connection and we just stay together forever. No, not for you. That's not how you work at all in any way, shape or form. You are more like you get into a relationship, you bond, you find out what it is that you can, how can this relationship transform you and transform the other? Because you're, you're going to connect that way with people. You're, you're going to do something with it. It's going to be, you're going to take action. 
You're the kind of person, because you have Pluto in this cardinal sign of relationships, cardinal meaning I take action, okay? You're going to bond deeply and it's going, you're going to make something of it. You're going to do something tangible with it because it's in the house of work. This is a superpower of yours, without a doubt. It's a superpower. And come January, you're going to be using that superpower. You're going to have Mars backing you, which is, which is inertia and passion and drive and assertiveness. Could even be aggressiveness if we're not careful, which is what I'm definitely going to be talking about. But for right now, this moon, this new moon that we've just had, uh, that we're having in the midst of it today, and the opposition that we're having from Uranus. And also we're experiencing a square from Mars and Saturn. And I've talked about that in depth in the other video. So I won't talk about that in depth for you, except to say you are experiencing that. That's where you'd want to know where this happens in your chart. I talk about that all the time and you get to hear about it because this is a free reading. So for you, uh, actually it's fascinating for you. <laughs> I know I can hear this person already. Yep, that always is fascinating for me. This shit's never dull. It's not. But Mars, the transiting Mars view is happening in your 12th house. And hold on a minute. This is totally, scratch that. Mars is in Libra right now. It's in your house of work. This was going into the getting up and going and taking action and moving. I'm on the wrong, my chart on the screen is on the wrong year. I saw that it said Aries, which is your 12th house. And I'm like, that shit ain't right. <laughs> that was shit right there. It wasn't legit. Now let me give you the legit. Okay. All righty. Doesn't take long to figure shit out. Okay. So Mars being there. Oh, actually the printed chart I gave you was a chart of, of well, it was of yesterday because I had to, I knew I was doing a free reading today and I always like to do my homework. So you see? Mars is right there, okay? So this Mars gives me the inertia. It gives me the energy. It gives me the strength. It gives me the capability to go ahead and to find work, to be aggressive in matters of work. Now, because it's in your sixth house, it isn't just work. It, sixth house is also our health. It's our work projects. It's our coworkers. It is domestic animals. That's the sixth house. Now, all these things that I'm talking about can apply to any of those things because the sixth house, like I said, is work. It's analyzing, it's Virgo qualities, it's gardening, it's work projects, it's coworkers, it's employees, okay? It is our health, okay? And when it's in Libra, it's about our relationship to those things. So your relationship to your own health and your own body, your relationship to the pets, to the, the relationship to the vegetables and to the garden, okay? This is Virgo stuff, right? The relationship to your physical body and your well-being and it being balanced because it's in Libra. Those things being balanced and trying to strike a balance and having Mars there right now for all of us, but for you particularly because it's in your sixth house, it's a matter of making deep transformational events occur in your life by way of work, by way of your health, by way of pets, okay? and by way of work projects, by way of coworkers and employees. And these are things that are for the good, as long as they're used in a way, altru in an altruistic way, which is, you know, for the good of all involved, that's altruistic energy. It, it resembles uh, the 11th house energy. It resembles Uranus. Uranus is all about the good of the people, the knowledge for the people. Uranus, it's the water bearer. It's actually the, the I'm sharing knowledge. It's actually kind of like this. It's sharing knowledge, okay? That is the best and highest way to use Plutonian energy. And because you have Mars there, it's really strong for you right now. And so you are just like, but I can't sit still with it. I physically have to do something with it. And there's other things in your chart which show you're going to get up and just go. You're going to get up and just go. Whether you, actually you have mentioned, I think we talked about this in the past, or you mentioned it, something about a move. And holy crap, there are multiple aspects in your chart that say you need to be moving. Because if you're not physically moving, as far as just, you know, working out, um, doing, you know, because it's in the house of Virgo, so yoga would be a, would make a whole hell of a lot of sense because you've got balance there. 
walking, things that are holistic, this would be completely and totally 100% to your advantage. But it's being squared by Saturn right now, okay? And the square is coming from your beliefs. It's coming from your beliefs. It's coming from your philosophies. It's coming from your higher learning. So maybe there's something I'm telling you here today that conflicts with this. Maybe there's something you've heard from other people you know who you consider your gurus, your teachers, or something you've come across and you've read in a book of, of an author that you really admire where it's challenging something deep inside of you that isn't really lined up with what they're saying. But the challenge isn't to weaken you. It's just simply to challenge your beliefs and to find out how stable your beliefs are, right? To find out maybe... Well, is it okay to change beliefs? Yeah, hell yeah. And that's the whole point of challenges to the belief system so that we can adapt a new value system in our beliefs. And it's, you're totally connected in a really big way to, the, the <laughs> to source. You've got Mars at your midheaven, okay? And that's, your ninth, that's in your ninth house. So for, this is, this is, that's an expression of your chart. This is definitely your chart. <laughs> It's like this person is all about that. That is extremely important. This, and anybody who isn't that, you might not have a whole lot of tolerance for. So you probably want to just, if you're not aware of that, you want to be aware of that. Not everybody is going to be where you're at. Definitely not all the time. And the percentage of the time that they're going to be there is probably going to be small. This, your chart is a fascinating read. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I say every chart I look at is fascinating. But it's fascinating to me because of the fact that to have Mars there in Capricorn on your midheaven, our midheaven is our highest hopes, goals, and aspirations. It is how we want to be seen in the world. And you have Capricorn there, you know. Not everybody gets to have Capricorn up there. It means you have come to do big things and you're going to do them. You have the, the power to do these big things. You have the tangible world behind you. You have the metaphysical, the non-tangible world. You have the spiritual world behind you, which is the next thing I wanted to get into. Actually, I'm not going to go there. I just realized I've been rambling, and I'm already at 17 minutes, and I've got to get to the big conjunction that's going to be. There's so much to talk about. But anyway, we're going to move along and get, get you to January so that we can have your free reading all wrapped up for you. I'm going to take us to January 13th. Write the date down. This is important. Um, I just thought that it was important going back to October that there were multiple, multiple occurrences, multiple setups energetically with the planets showing move, that you're going to be doing some sort of a move, a job move. That's really what it showed, that you're moving for the purpose of a job. It's, it's not just so much being worn out by the location as far as what the location offers and the people, but there is this drive inside of you that says, energetically, this place cannot support my work. Because the bottom line is your work, what you came to do. And I know this because I see where your north node is. And this is the time in your reading where I'm actually going to turn this because I want you to get a visual on this. I want you to see what I see. And hopefully I've got it all set up so it's, it works out nicely. So just bear with me for a moment here. And yeah, I got to be annoying and I got to kind of, oh, I got to make sure that my, I know my head's going to pop in here a little bit, but that's okay. I got to make sure that, that we're all on the same page and that we can see what's going on. Oops, rocking the boat here. Okay, so here we go in your chart. What I'm looking at, this is January 13th. Oops. It says 2019. Again, I forgot to change the year. I'm so used to having a partner on my readings here. And I, uh, when you got a partner to work with you, you just speak and they kind of type in the stuff or vice versa. They speak and you type it all in. Anyhow, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to your chart. Let's go to the chart and let's see what we're taking a peek at here. Okay. So here we are. January 13th, 2020. The reason I pulled up this date is because there is a big-ass conjunction in Capricorn. See all this uh, planet's locations up here? 
the green stuff, these are the current transits, current locations of the planets for January 13th of 2020. So we've got Mercury, Saturn, Pluto, and the Sun, and Jupiter all in Capricorn. Notice this was the 17 degree Mars that I talked to you about. Notice it's on your midheaven. Your midheaven's at 1724, your Mars is at 1712, meaning this is our drive. This is what we, our highest hopes, goals, and aspirations on a worldly type of way. Like I came into this world because this is what I want to be known for. This is it. Like there's nobody changing your mind about this. This is set in stone. This is set in stone for you. How can I say that? Because Saturn is the ruler of this. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. Capricorn is our concrete world. Saturn is our concrete world. And it's Capricorn. It's cardinal. It's drive. It's nothing will stop me. I will climb this ladder and I don't give a goddamn how many rungs on the ladder break. I will shimmy my ass up the sides of that ladder. It does not matter. I don't need rungs on my goddamn ladder. My ass will get up that ladder one way or another. That's Capricorn. It's cardinal energy. I can say all that I just said because guess what? On top of that, you have Mars assisting you. So your drive to ascend is phenomenal. It's outstanding. Now, January 13th, let's get down to the conjunction. For everyone in the world, Saturn and Pluto sitting on top of each other at this time is a big, big deal. It's a big deal because they're going to be at 23 degrees. And look, what's at 23 degrees in your chart? Your ascendant is at 23 degrees. And that's a cardinal sign. Aries is cardinal. Capricorn is cardinal. That means it's a square. You have Saturn and Pluto squaring your ascendant. At this time, their, your sun is also going to be squared because the sun is right there at 22 degrees. 2214 is the sun. At this time, Mercury is also going to be here at 2343. Mercury is almost at 24 degrees here. She's at 2343. It's almost an exact square to your ascendant. Okay, I want you to be aware of this. As much drive as you have, there's this big square setting up to tell you, hey, lady, hey, guy, hey, person, whoever you are, you need to acknowledge your physical body. Okay, it's Aries. It's our body. You have Saturn, which gives restrictions. Okay, Pluto, which is about deep transformations. Okay. Now, this isn't going to be like some permanent, permanent thing, okay? But it is going to have, it, it will be something you have to acknowledge and recognize. Now, knowing this in advance, okay, is important. Knowing this in advance is important because you, right now, having this reading, you need to plan and be strategic, okay? You may have... If you look over in your sixth house, you have Pluto and Libra in your health. Health, sixth house is health and work. You may be having to focus more on you right now, okay? Why am I saying that? Because your sixth house in Libra is squared by this. It's not squared by the 22 degrees, but if you look closely on this day, January 13th, you have Jupiter there at nine degrees, okay? See that? It's squaring your Pluto. Your Pluto, it says 857, that's actually 9 degrees. So that means that while you're having this square, you're also having Jupiter squaring Pluto in Libra, in the house of work and balance. Health. This is January. Okay, so be aware that this factor right here is a below-the-surface thing. It's Pluto. It's below the surface. There might be some health stuff that's below the surface. Now, what I also want to say to you is that this does not have to be, this alone, this can be something that for someone like you, this, because you have an Aries rising, so that makes you very physically, you're a very physical being. You're moving around. You're not sitting down. You're not a, you know, you are an active individual, physical, physically active individual. 
Yeah, you're really intelligent too. Mercury with the Uranus up there in Aquarius. Um, but you're a physically active person. What I want you to be aware of is that this square, other than being a physical square, this square has a great spiritual potentiality. I mean phenomenal. It's doubly phenomenal because this degree, you can't see it right now. It, for some reason, the astrology charts don't print the south node. But the south node is actually right here at this time. If I were to go down at the other side of the chart, the charts print up our north node. If you look, the north node is at 9 degrees right there, right? So that means the south node is also at 9 degrees, but in the opposing sign, which is Capricorn. This means the south node is right on top of Jupiter. You know what the south node is? The south node is what we are to release, what we're working on to release. Now, because it's in your ninth house, there's a belief system that you have, okay? There's a belief system, something about what you believe in, okay? And it also has to do with power and work because it's squaring work. It's also squaring health. I already mentioned that. That might not be a huge factor, but the reason I brought it up is because you are going to be experiencing something squaring health on this side. So you have two factors that are contributing to a decline in health at that time, to a challenge to health at that time. This is the one factor, and then the Jupiter-Pluto factor here. But what I will say to you, that in and along with the physical challenge, there is... Jupiter squaring Pluto, which is also a great spiritual challenge. And not spiritual so much in, um, the best way to put it is because it's the south node and because it's work and because it's Pluto and because it's Jupiter, right? That, that's complex. I just listed four main players. What I feel, see, and hear is that there is this awesome work project you're working on at this time. There's this great idea you have, and it involves working with merging. It's Libra, okay? So I want you to be really aware of your desire and unbelievable drive to spearhead a project in a way where you are the captain and you are in charge. You're going to feel extremely powered because Pluto is sending its beam down I'm sorry, Jupiter is sending its beam down to Pluto, and Pluto is sending its beam back to Jupiter. They're, they're lighting each other up. So Pluto is power. Jupiter is expansion. I add to what's being sent to me. So you're feeling very powerful in ideas with work, work projects. Also, if you, if you were going to be working with the government at all in any way, shape, or form at that time, you know, because... Capricorn is government and big business. So what I want you to be aware of is the ego at this time. That's what this transit is about. It's about you're, you, can, you have the ability to take some project and to move it forward exponentially, but at the same time be aware of others who may have something to contribute and don't be the tyrant. Don't be the power freak. You know, don't be the one who's just like, no, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> there, there's just going to be that tendency there at that time. Now, what makes this so exciting for me is that this is the south node lining up with this, which means, which, which means that, that you're going to have help in releasing these things because Jupiter's going to make sure you see these, these beliefs that you have that need to be released, Okay. And it will help you to listen to what somebody else has to say. It'll help you to listen to what they have to contribute. Now, at the same time, because this is at 9 degrees, and we know that this is at 9 degrees, that means you have another square occurring. Okay? You have another square occurring. You're going to have Pluto, your natal Pluto, being squared by the north node, the transiting north node. Okay? Now, the transiting north node is what we came to do on a collective scale, okay? It's in the third house. Third house is media. Third house is communicating and thinking. 
third house is my immediate environment. Okay? So that's going to be challenged by Pluto. Challenge just means power. Pluto's going to send a beam of power, zoop, lighting that up. Okay? And there's going to be a tension and a stress because that's what these squares do. But these things, again, it's another cardinal square. You're going to take action. You're going to see something occur and you're going to be like, okay, I need to, I need to move on this. Now that brings me to my next point in your chart, and I'm going to wrap your reading up with this. <sighs> so far, everything I've talked about since I've been pointing at the screen has been this date, January 13th, 2020. Okay? At this time, on this day, Mars, the transiting Mars, is sitting directly on top of your private natal north node in Sagittarius. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the north node in Sagittarius means. It's all about your beliefs. I know, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sounds familiar. You're getting help, though, because Mars is going to be here on top of your north node. The north node is what you came in this life to do, okay? This is, you have to take care of this business. This is what your soul came to do in this lifetime. Mars is here to assist. Wherever Mars is, Mars gives us the impetus. Mars is the one who's like, let's take action. It's in a fire sign, Sag. You're going to be taking action. And it's about the beliefs, okay? And it's about deep beliefs because it's in your eighth house. Hidden deep beliefs that you weren't aware of. What I'm saying is this is going to help you with this. This is helping you achieve this. You have help, okay? You have help. This is helping you achieve this, okay? So this square and this, this square are getting help by this here. I keep saying this and this and this and square and square and square. Know that you're gonna have assistance, okay? You have your north node in Sag, which is your belief systems, which is speaking. I am the teacher, this is my truth, and you all need to believe it. Guess what? You wanna, you wanna, the reason this is your north node is because you came to understand that your truth, everybody has their own truths, and you need to honor all truths, all beliefs. Not to the degree where then you need to make them your belief, but you need to know that just because you believe something doesn't mean someone else has to believe the same thing, okay? Because North Node and Sag is all about my beliefs and it's my philosophy. It's, these are deep beliefs. These are the beliefs that people kill each other for, right? My religion, my philosophy on life, my idea of the divine, my, my belief systems about the world and beyond the world, my cosmic belief systems. And I can say that about you because you have Neptune there. You know, Neptune is so much about my connection with God, my connection with the universe, my connection with source. Okay? So Mars is going to be touching that north node that day, and that's going to be actually helping you. And then you're going to get more help because Mars is a pretty quick moving planet, and it's going to touch on your Neptune. And Neptune is this divine, beautiful ethereal, untangible existence of energy, source, and you're going to have Mars there. You're going to be able to connect with it. So this is a really powerful thing to have. This is a really beautiful thing to have, okay? Really beautiful. And I wanted you to know all this because you are coming upon some tough times and it's showing it to the body because there's this big square. But at the same time, rest assured, that you have Mars up here natally, okay, and you have, hold on a minute, I saw it before in your, where is it, uh, you have, you have, you always have assistance. This 17 degree Mars, if you look over here, it sextiles your Venus in Neptune, and if you look at the transiting Neptune, it's right on top of your Venus almost. It's right on top of your 12th house. So at this time, like a sextile means help. It means help. So this Mars, right, and this house and all this energy that's throwing this square to over here, again, you have Neptune saying, okay, I get it, but here's the bigger picture. It's going to be okay. And you have Venus, who is abundance and love and beauty and peace. 
Venus loves peace. I want us to be peaceful, okay? And then she's lit up by Jupiter. I mean, you have a lot of help. This is nothing that you cannot see yourself through, all right? But it's going to feel tough, right? It's going to feel tough. A lot of reasons is because we are all going to be experiencing this, okay? But for you, it directly affects your ascendant, all right? But also know on your ascendant here at 23 degrees, the chart doesn't have it right now. But just so you know, this is where Eris is. And that's also why it's going to be a big deal for the world. Because Eris is the divine feminine energy squaring up with Sun and Pluto and Saturn and Mercury in another cardinal sign. Eris is here. And I've done lots of videos on her. I'll put a video for Eris below in case you didn't watch it. You can watch it and understand more about what Eris is, you know, doing there. She is the divine feminine power. And so basically overall what that means for you and your reading, your free reading, is use this connectivity that you have to divine source. You have it in multiple ways in your chart. Uranus and Scorpio. Okay. Uranus and Scorpio, you can take that up to the highest level. You are the phoenix rising. You become the eagle. What does that mean? It means you're actually going over here and you're connecting to Taurus and Uranus with self. You have Neptune in Sagittarius, which is Jupiter in the eighth house. Neptune is God, is source. You have Mars there, your north node. That's what you came to do, which means it will be done. You have... You just have a lot of really nice things going on that help you to get through this tough square that you're going to be facing. And you're going to be okay because the sun moves pretty fast. Saturn moves forward. It won't ever come back to this point ever again to square your ascendant. Um, at least not together holding hands with Jupiter. And uh, if you want to know a little bit more about this, we can do that for you. You just let me know. Let me get this stuff off my screen. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, you let me know. We can uh, do a further reading for you and give you more details. But I think this is going to give you a nice, a nice amount of information to move forward and to know that you have support. Okay? So I am going to uh, close this out. And just say that you've got what it takes to move forward. You've got sources help and you've got help from the universe. And just know that you got this.